Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Living Theosophy 2.0. We are bringing you all things love, compassion, empathy, understanding, unity, bringing these ancient teachings into a modern world. And tonight, we have a very special guest. We do. We all know that theosophy is divine science and divine knowledge. And from the darkness comes the light. Tonight, from Porto, Portugal, we welcome the one and only Joma Saip, whose extraordinary artwork is woven with the light of spiritual illumination, transcending dimensions, and far more than just symbols of the architecture of the universe. Joma's sacred geometrical pattern pieces seem to have a life force all of their own. They add imagery to accompany the timeless esoteric wisdom of love and compassion and empathy and altruism and understanding and balance and self-transformation. Joma has said that his paintings evolve completely from inner inspiration. In studying his works, his ethos seems similar to that of otherworldly singer, musician, and composer Lisa Gerard to me, who has described a very similar method of creating. It's a journey of deep heart and soul transmutation that channels spiritual realms and transporting one to higher planes of consciousness. Joma says, I make with all the geometrical patterns and drawings a kind of an inner code one that can be understood by those who are connected with it and remember it. He also has a full color 150 page book available on Amazon right now. It came out in 2012. It's called Soul of Light, Works of Illumination. And on his website, which is jomasipe.com, J-O-M-A-S-I-P-E.com, you can find more books, you can find poetry, cards, pendants, even masks. Joma has masks available <laughs> at jomaslife.com. And they're beautiful geometric works of art. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to the one and only Joma Saip. Welcome, Joma. Oh, thank you. Hi, thank Joma. you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, we, we're going to also be showcasing, you'll be seeing some of Joma's work come up on the screen. But again, we would like you to go to the website to see it. Uh, in its full grandeur, it's, it's an incredible website. Um, it has, as I was saying in the intro, a spiritual uh, sense to it that it's its almost, I want to say alive, but I wanted to ask you, Joma, just a yes. little bit about your spiritual journey and your background and why this path. Hello, and thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this show, to this program, and to speak a, li a little about my work. Uh, it is nice to be here and uh, to give some uh, thoughts about um, uh, art and uh, the art connection uh, with uh, ourselves, with uh, within ourselves. Uh, so art uh, for me, it's um, like trying to transmit in words. Some people use words, some people use um, music and uh, other forms of transmitting the inner feelings mm -hmm. and i use art um, for me geometrical uh, art is like um, uh, speaking is like chanting it's transmitting something from within and uh, the lines and the circles and the triangles and the points that uh, connect uh, each other is like a, a inner path to our inner self. Mm -hmm. So it's like these things happen inside ourselves, inside our cells, our blood, our molecules, and that kind of, uh, of transmission of uh, inner connections become uh, transmitted physically through art, to ge through the geometry. That is what I what I feel when I, when I draw when I make the the geometrical patterns and drawings. When you are creating one of these pieces, when you does it come to you in your mind first, or is it born once you go to the drawing board? Um, how are you feeling? Are you do you feel like you're channeling, for lack of a better word? Yes, a channeling is not a, a very good word because uh, it, it has been used so many 
times for so many reasons that um, every people channel. So it's not a very good word, but in, in the lack of a, a better world, I think it's a good, a good one to explain the, the method because I have nothing in my mind. Mm. So everything is, is blank without form. And when I, I sit in front of uh, the blackboard or the black canvas, the images seem to appear. And they appear in a way that my hands uh, go with the, the, those images that appear mm -hmm. on my mind. And the hand transmits the, those images to the paper or to the canvas. I um, I quote a page a passage from uh, I believe it is is unveiled from Blavatsky, when she um, refers to her, her own work uh, on writing uh, to a sister Vera in Russia when she wrote to to Odessa to to her, and she explains uh, the images that were coming when she was writing is is unveiled. She was seeing the battles and uh, the ages and uh, all things that happened. And she could see this, those images in her mind and she could write what she was seeing. It's, it's a, I, I, believe, I, I felt some similarity with that kind of work. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Um, and hi, Lyndon. <laughs> hi, hi. That's a lovely thing you said that you recognise that there's a process there which you you refer to is is sort of like um, I think you said it was not a stillness but um, a place that you go to. Yes. So yeah. do you when you're doing the creative process? So you're you're doing a new piece. Say, do you actually read something or feel? So what's the, what's the instigation behind? Because I know you've had a change recently in your style has been you you what's what's the process how how does that come about sometimes i i have uh, something in my mind like a word or a text that, that i read about uh, like the curse in miracles that i ha i quoted some passages and on yeah. soul of light um and the, that passages inspires me and um, somehow it opens like a, 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 somehow a portal or a door to some dimension where we can all assess. And we have all access to the, that kind of imagery and mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, of place. Uh, but people uh, sometimes expresses it uh, uh, some way, others don't, doesn't uh, express it at all. Um, it's a place that exists in, within uh, all of us. No one is, is uh, special or no one is, uh, has uh, some different uh, abilities to connect to, with uh, that kind of place. Mm. Uh, simply we have to listen to our stillness, to our own heart and uh, connect. It's simply like that. Mm. It's a very simple process. It's not a complex or complicated process. Blood running through through your your veins. You don't think about the blood no, that is no, running, yeah. or the amount of blood that is running through the veins, or the the uh, inner connections within the brain, the, our brain. Everything develops in um, a natural and uh, not complex uh, way. So this kind of creation is like that, I believe. How how do you feel when you're um I, I don't want you to say nothing, but I think you might say <laughs> but when you're in, when you're in the deep process of art and you're um you know you're creating and you're going along this process, what does it feel like? I'd love to know, even if it's nothing. <laughs> I I don't feel uh, anything uh, particularly. Um, I feel that time passes because the hours and the minutes pass uh, and um, nothing um, special happens. Uh, things uh, uh, passes through, through me, through my mind uh, and through my hands to the paper or to the canvas. 
and they appear simply uh, there, uh, make uh, make it by my my hands. Mm. And I mean, the pieces that you do are so beautiful; mm -hmm. they really are. And we encourage Thank everybody you. to go to your website and look at your 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 books because if anybody's seen your art, they will recognize it as yours. It is truly beautiful. Thank work you, thank that you. you do it really <laughs> is you see some popping up here we're going to put some on the screen so they can okay. see them uh, they truly are otherworldly and they do yes, have yeah, you yeah, do make it sound good. you make it sound like it's <laughs> you know, i wish we all could do that um <laughs> but um i do and they are the sacred geometry the 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 beauty in these pieces um they've been called i think it was dr friendly eversoul who said that they were on yes. one of your books it said vehicles and I thought this is really interesting, vehicles of meditation, um, yeah. just to, by looking at them. Um, when did you know that these weren't just art pieces, that they were something far more than just, just a painting or just a, a sculpture? How, when did you know? Was it always like this? No, not always like this. Um, I, I, I began drawing uh, simple pieces of geometrical patterns and uh, geometrical drawings. But um, it was some years ago, I believe, about the publishing of Soul of Light, mm. that um, everything became yeah. connected. And I feel a, a deep energy uh, related with, with the healing also. No, oh, really? Yes, when, when I, I do the works. Because I feel that the connection and the sym symmetry and um, the harmonious uh, creations of geometrical uh, patterns and geometrical symbols create some kind of healing process um, inside the, the person that is uh, looking to, to the pieces. Oh. That is so beautiful, so valuable. You've done some pieces on um, the theosophical writings, and I know you've also studied yes. other religions as well. Um, the Kabbalah, you studied yes. that as well, and the uh, the Course in Miracles. Uh, but the theosophical writings, do you do you actually? I know we've kind of touched on it, but you say they're inspired by Isis Unveiled and inspired by um, the Secret Doctrine. Which comes first? Do they come through as a representation of the theosophical teachings, or do you think of a theosophical study, a text that you love, and then go to the drawing board? Yes, uh, it's, it happens the, the last way. Oh, the last uh, way. Yeah. 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 Uh, for instance, uh, I, I read a passage from the, um, the Voice of the Silence, and uh, so that passage, passage inspires me. Yes. And, and some something that uh, Blavatsky wrote, major uh, Blavatsky writings. That must be a lovely process to do that. I'm quite envious. I really am. Not only is <laughs> Me not, too. Not, not, We're, we are envious. I'm not <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I'm really envious of your ability, but also your artistry, uh, <laughs> but also the fact that you've connected these. Could you expand a little bit more on the healing? Because I've not heard you talk about that before. Mm -hmm. Please, um, John. The element of healing and how that might, might, might yes. heal. Yes, because I, I believe healing, the healing process is um, a process that is related with harmony. So when bo the, the body is on an harmonious state, it can, it can be healed. It can be um, uh, put on the process. When there is some kind of disorder, there, there is a process that can make that uh, order appear. And that is um, achieved with, uh, with uh, harmonious paths or harmonious things that we can uh, look to. So when when you see an harmonious uh, painting or an harmonious uh, picture or a geometrical pattern, that makes some kind of connection with the, the interior of our, our, our of our body, and that kind of connection makes uh, that kind of healing. So when when we find um, when we see some um, uh, order outside 
that order outside can connect with the order inside of us and can uh, some kind of disharmonious patterns or disharmonious uh, things that happen inside our body can be healed through that harmonious process. That kind of process we can see in nature, um, in the sun, in the clouds, in the sky, uh, on the water, on the sea, when we look to the stars, that are kind of harmonious um, things that happen in, in nature. And that kind of things can be, uh, can be brought into inside of us. Oh, it's gorgeous because nature, nature, it's all about nature. Yes, That's what yes. we're yeah. looking at. And, and I know you use, when you come in to use crystals, and I've watched you use crystals to bring yes. in the light, but I'm not sure how that process works. I also know that you use silver and gold and you have these just gorgeous pieces. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the materials that you use to create your work? Um, I know you've added color, but if we were talking about from uh, like the key of life uh, forward uh, for these geometric patterns, is it yeah. wire that we're looking at? Is it wire? Uh, is it how, what is the silver and gold? Uh, no, it's it's uh, uh, they are uh, these are drawings made by oh. pens, okay. silver and gold based ink pens, ink. and and I draw everything by hand using compass, squares, and um, rules. And uh, with the pens, I draw everything. So it's not a computer uh, de design. It's a very, um, it's a process that is made by hand. Do you see the whole thing before you start drawing or does it evolve from section to section? Yes, uh, I don't see anything. Oh my God. Oh my God, that is so remarkable. <laughs> no, I, don't, I can't I believe don't that. <laughs> I don't see. I don't see the piece when, um, I only see the piece when it's finished. Oh, and, I, and I know when, when it's finished, when I cannot draw anything more or any line and the process stops. It's like, it's like my hand stops and I cannot draw anything else. And the, the crystals, you say you bring those in. Do you bring those in for vibration, for consciousness? What, what do you use the crystals with your paintings for? Uh, I yeah. believe the crystals add the illumination that is needed to yeah. some point and uh, the balance and the harmony that can be created by the use of the crystals connected um, on some points that I glue them on, the, on those points. And then uh, I also was inspired by the, the light of the crystals to create uh, th this time using, using computer effects on the photographs of the silver and gold. Mm -hmm. And then I use computer effects to create the ethereal um, aspect and the colors. So the, <clears throat> the astral colors and all of that is all computer added, but I'm yes. really blown away that the design themselves, the shapes themselves are not computer generated. No. That's Joman generated. <laughs> that's <laughs> really, that's some it. of them are. It's just it's, absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I've seen some epic, epic work. And uh, to start just, you know, to start just doing that, it must be absolutely daunting, but you just go for it by the sounds of it. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> just to let that energy flow and be free and, and just go for it. Wow. I have created uh, some symbols related with the Kabbalah and the, the Sephirot tree of life with the 10 Sephirots and the, the 22 pieces of the Kabbalah. And uh, I am I'm inspired with many esoteric traditions, even uh, with uh, Ospensky and Gurdjieff, the Enneagram, uh, Rudolf Steiner uh, right. explanation of symbols and, and colors. Um, many, many traditions, many ancient traditions that have symbolical and geometrical figures in, inspires me. Yeah, I, I can see that when you <laughs> are. I mean, it's, um, it's free flowing, but it's representative. I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but I do feel moved. Yes, yeah. yes. Which, which, it touched the heart. 
He does, <laughs> which which it, it's almost um, like a piece of you. I don't, I don't, yeah. don't, does that sound right? I feel it's quite a, mm -hmm. a personal thing, really. It is quite a personal thing to do is a piece of art like that for us all to see. Yes, yes, uh, wonderful I believe gift, also. Wonderful gift, Gemma. Thank you. Thank you, Lyndon. Is it your full-time job? Is this what you do full-time? You have No, a... no, no. I have oh a full-time <laughs> I have Wait. a full-time job that uh, I am civil engineer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> when do you have time to Joma? <laughs> I have I have time. I, I do a lot. I do a lot of things. When wow. I, I I am inspired, I, I I do a lot. I work a lot. Many hours. I have a studio, yes, where, where I yeah. do, do these kind of works, yes. And that's open to the public? Not now, because it's a, it's a mess. <laughs> oh, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a lo lots of work because um, some works, uh, I, I work um, in a series of works. Sometimes I have a series of works that are connected with some kind of work that I am doing or some kind of uh, hermetic or is a tra tradition and I work by series so I finish some some series but the the final series is not completed so I go again not to the work but to the series and uh, I uh, I work um, on that kind of series has anybody ever gotten a tattoo of your work or <laughs> has, has anybody done that any, yes, I believe, I believe they so, have. yes, they have. Well, I can see why. Um, and also <laughs> book covers. Have book covers or album covers come yes. calling? They, yes. have. Yes. they have. They have. Yes. Do you have any that you can share with us? Anybody uh, that we might know of that's used your work? Yes, I, I have made some covers for The Theosophist and, uh, and also for some books, uh, spiritual mm -hmm. books. Uh, yeah. Very... In, and also for CDs, covers from a, uh, an English artist that is called Neil H. Oh, so we'll keep I an think. eye out for that. Yes, it's very. I have on my website. The, they use the mandalas, use oh, yeah. the, the portals series, and he made a lot of uh, very nice, calm and uh, concentration and meditation music. It's a very lovely artist. Do you listen to music when you create? Is there anything going on outside of your work? Are you listening to something? When I you cannot. Work? I cannot work uh, without music. What music do you listen to? I uh, listen to calm, deep uh, concentration music, like um, uh, Neil H, uh, yes. like uh, Enya. Yes. Uh, Vangel Vangelis, uh, Pratik Bernard, he has a lot of uh, very beautiful music. Also, Ashana, yeah. also her music. Have you heard of uh, Juan Carlos Garcia? Juan Carlos Garcia? Juan Carlos Garcia, yes, yeah, also. Yes. A lot of uh, uh, liquid mind. That is a group that has a meditation uh, music. It's very, very calm and very suitable. I cannot work uh, in silence. I understand. I understand. Thank you for sharing that. I just wondered yeah. what was happening when these were being created. <laughs> music is, it... is all always uh, playing. If is music it... is not playing, I cannot work. Oh, that's interesting. That yes. is very interesting. Yes. Um, uh, how about Lisa Gerard? Do you ever listen Lisa, to Lisa Gerard? Lisa Gerard also. Yes. yes, I have her her albums, all of her albums. You seem very similar. The same way she says, "I can't explain where it comes from. It just comes, yeah. and then it transports to another world." And it seemed yes. like your stuff went together when I was putting your bio together. They just seemed to be hand in hand. Same <laughs> type of same type of thing, but a different medium. A different um, medium, yes, yeah. yes. Because she improvises a lot. She mm -hmm. um, she enters on a, on a stage and uh, she improvises with her voice, uh, just accompanying something that is being played, mm -hmm. and her voice goes. And she's she has nothing planned, so uh, her voice goes along the music. Yes, you 
It's, it's very, very similar nice. though, because it does feel like it's not of this world. Just like looking at your artwork <laughs> is not of this world, but it is. And we're grateful that you yes, brought it, it to us. Yeah, um, Lyndon, do you have any other questions? Well, I was just going to say, uh, my um, understanding of the theosophical view is that um, the, sens the sensory ability to perceive the world through the five senses, so whether it be audio or visual or through art, through music, of course, they're all um, they're all ways of uh, understanding in the in a deeper sense, and I think this is what this is what you're speaking of that we know when we read the Theosophical texts that um, they speak of these um, the the meta the beyond uh, realization, and I think that's what your art really does when you talk about your process that you listen to music and you let this work flow. Um, we could say it's like listening to a piece of music and um, being moved by it. It's the same. Yeah. Um, it's the same beauty, just through a different sensory organ. It's the eyes or the ears, or um, I think that's really wonderful. And I, I, I encourage everybody to to look at your art and just yeah. to spend time to just observe and see it because it is moving. It really is. Um, okay. Congratulations on all all what you've done. Thank you, Lyndon. Um, we, we really do love your, your work. It's true. It's unique and visionary. It's, it's out of this world, but of this world. Thank um, you. I, I wanted to ask Joma, if you could go back, would you go back in time or forward in time if you had a time machine? Would you go <laughs> forward or back? Would you go into the future or the past? I would love to, I would love to go to the time when uh, Blavatsky was alive, really. Yeah. Yes. So if you had a favorite theosophist to sit and have tea with, would it be Blavatsky? Yes, it will be. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a way, your artwork allows us to do just that. Oh, you're <laughs> so sweet. It's true. Um, I would so love to, to be with her, in deep connection with her and with her higher writings and uh, with the person itself, yes. Yes, yes. Do you have, you have obviously more planned. Do you have anything that you're working on right now before we let you go? What are you working, what's on your table right now? <laughs> on my table right now, I'm working on the frontispiece for uh, the Lucifer collection. Oh, from yes. Erica. Yes, yes the Lucifer um, collection, yes. And the Lucifer collection. I'm, I was, uh, I am trying to make the, the frontispiece that I made uh, on, uh, on paper on uh, gold and uh, silver and uh, crystals. Are you doing the book covers for those? I made the frontispiece for Oh, the, that's for beautiful, the, good. That and, appears on all the, all the books of the collection. Yes, I think that's on Amazon now. Well yeah, done. Yeah, on Amazon, yes. yes. yes well yes. done. Um, did you read a Lucifer magazine article before you went and did that? Did you, or did you just take the Blavatsky vibe and do that? Was there anything in particular that helped you with those pieces? Yes, yes. I, I look uh, for the, this frontispiece especially. Mm -hmm. I look to um, many uh, symbolical connections with uh, Lucifer. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with the planet, the planet oh, Venus yeah. and the, the bright star. star, yes, the, mor the morning star mm -hmm. and the connection with the Phosphorus and Esphorus mm -hmm. and the, the, the Greek themes and um, the, the references that Blavatsky mentions when the, she mentions Lucifer as the light bringer and um, that symbolism, there, there are many symbolical connections, uh, especially the planet, mm -hmm. the bright well, star. It's yeah. important to go ahead and, and educate everyone as it, there's been such a spin from what Pope Gregory on and Lucifer is yes, bad. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you for giving a visual to that because that will help because automatically people shut down and yeah. they just assume it equals Satan without investigation. And uh, what a brave thing for them to name that magazine, Lucifer, back in the day. Yeah. I find that extremely yeah. brave and I'm grateful it's coming out again. And thank you for all that you are and do. You truly are a delight. We are so grateful to thank have you. Thank you so you. much, Anne. 
But you're welcome. I just wanted to say don't leave without going to the website. It's jomasipe.com. That's J-O-M-A-S-I-P-E.com. You're going to be seeing more of this stuff. But again, it's not just artwork. There's something else in this. There's an energy. There's a, an electricity. There's a, a vibration. This is, is bringing these pieces. You'll see when you can see them up here on the screen. But when you see them, you can see them in the book. Again, the book is called, this came out in 2012. There are other books available on the website. We have Soul of Light, Works of Illumination. This is all full color. It's gorgeous. And there's also, uh, that's on Amazon, but there's also poetry books and there's mandalas, there's ne necklaces. And don't forget your masks while we still need them. Get them from <laughs> joasife.com. So thank you so, so much. All the love in the world. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. It's been a pleasure having you here on Living Thank Chaos. you so thank much you. also. It's been a pleasure, thank you. A pleasure also, thank you. Welcome to the end of the video. Here we are backstage at Living Theosophy 2.0. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when Living Theosophy has a brand new video. And there's lots of things happening here at Living Theosophy. And uh, I, for a long time, didn't want to ask if you would like and subscribe because I was trying to be humble. But Without the algorithm, these teachings can't get out to where they need to be. So I'm going to say, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you back here. I love you. <laughs>